Welcome to the channel, Gran Colombia, formerly called Cuenca, Ecuador. As I moved around, I expanded the horizons. Now, who am I? I do these videos they initially be out of, uh, I gotta do something, and so I started making these videos. I've lived in uh, three countries outside of the United States for a total of seven and a half years, and I've been to 20 countries outside of the United States. Basically my videos are to tell you about my life and my experiences living in Ecuador and in Colombia. Today I'm going to start a series on how to become an expat. Also if you're new to the videos or even if you're not, the comment section below the video, take a look at it, go down through there, there's a lot of information. We're going to touch a lot of topics in this series. We're going to begin by talking about making your decision. Why do you want to do this? Also, we're going to discuss the where, how to choose where you want to live, how you're going to do it, your finances, language, other things that come into play, when you decide to make the move, and that can be important, and who. You know, what will I mean by who when we get to that? Are you going to come alone? Do you know people where you're going? Have you made connections? Who will be your safety net? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about why. Alright, I had somebody make fun of me because I use skim milk. So let me show you a little trick here. And um, you may not realize it, but most coffee shops will use skim milk. Put this in a French press. Hit this a couple times. Now we're going to pour in my little mocha pot. Take a look at this skim milk. Why are you making this decision? Now, I will put at the end of this video, a couple boxes will come up. There's some videos in the past, a few years ago, where I covered this topic a little bit from a different point of view. But this series will be specifically talking to you, primarily in the United States, about the possibility of living in another country. Whatever decision you make is going to have long-term consequences, so don't gloss over this. It's important that you really sit down, pen and paper, and start figuring out what's your motivation to do it. As you sit there in the United States, what is it that causes you to decide that you may want to live in another country? Now, of course, we can pick up the headlines and we can read all kinds of terrible things and you can just be sick of it. But there's an easy answer to that. Quit picking up those headlines, turn off the TV, stop embedding yourself in the drama that goes on. Because, let me remind you, this goes back a long time ago. There's been turmoil and division for a long time. I mean just think back to Ronald Reagan 1980 and all the horrible things that were said about the man. You would have thought he was devil incarnate. So this is not new. You know we could talk about the things that were went on with Bill Clinton and Bush and read my lips and you know mission accomplished and we can go over that and spend the rest of our lives doing it. It's just the nature of it. 
but you don't have to embed yourself in that. You don't have to get so invested that you get worked up. So there's an alternative to that. But here's, here's the question I have for you. You live where you have friends, acquaintances, family. Why would you want to move away from that? Think about what would happen if something terrible in your life occurred. If you're off in another country, who do you turn to? Who do you reach out for? What do you do? If you're in the United States or wherever, you have people to turn to, and particularly in the United States, there's safety nets. Let's say uh, you run into a problem and you can't come up with money for food. I mean, you got food stamps. There's, there's, there's a pretty strong, hefty safety net. And not just through the government, through all kinds of organizations. I mean, if you can't afford your fuel oil, you can find sources that will cover that for you. Do you think this exists? in places like in South America? Not really, not really. So you have to consider that. They think they're going to live like a king. They think they're going to go to a tropical paradise with perfect weather, with the ability to have servants or a maid. They're going to be able to live a much better lifestyle than where they came from. That lure is appealing. You know, there's pictures of uh, tropical beaches flowing through their head and coconut drinks. If you have these ideas of this fantasy of going and living a perfect life somewhere, you really need to check yourself on that because I will tell you, it simply is not the case. But these long-term decisions, where do they come from? You know, financial need unhappiness where you are you're dissatisfied with your life with how you perceive the world you're just frustrated and you're looking for an answer you're looking for a quick fix to your problem maybe you're already retired and you just feel like there's no purpose in your life and you're looking for that place you can go and maybe do volunteer work and help the the poor indigenous populations. I mean, these are the usual things. And, and what are people primarily going to base their decision on? It's going to be cost of living, weather. But I keep going back to the financial aspect. Many people see this as an opportunity to basically raise their economic status. So you're going to retire on Social Security in the United States and let's say it's $1,500 and there you're afraid that you're going to be living on cat food. Life is going to be really tough. It's going to be hard to get by. How are you going to do it? You got to pay for gas. You got to pay for a car. So maybe if you go to a place that doesn't have the need for a car and expenses are much lower, you can live a great life. But just keep this in mind, and I'm not saying those things aren't true, because yeah, they can be true, but there's two sides to every coin. You know, we, let's throw out all kinds of things. The grass is greener. Those cliches exist for a reason. While you might improve your economic status, or let's say you're guaranteed to improve your economic status, which you're not, but let's say that you are. You're going to give up and sacrifice a lot of things. And these are the things that we're going to get into in this series. So as you're making your decision as to why you want to go, be honest with yourself. Think long and hard because you really have to live with this decision. Now I'll use Cuenca in a lot of examples because that seems to be the hot spot right now. Uh, tomorrow will be something else. But right now it's Cuenca. The stats are approximate, but this is what they are. About half of the people that go from the United States to Cuenca, Ecuador, leave after the first year. Now, why is that? They didn't make the right decision. They weren't honest with themselves. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people, and they're actually very easy to identify in Cuenca, 
that are not happy with their decision. And who are these people? How do you identify them? These are the people that defend their decision against all logic. They are the people that will blindly assert that Cuenca is the absolute best place on earth. And if you say anything that they perceive as negative, they will tear into you, they'll vilify you. Just read down through posts on various groups on Facebook. It can get pretty vicious. And I'll tell you, having been in Ecuador for some time, you can see the people that come and go and those posts well, not always. Some of those people stay behind. Some of those people are just miserable people. They're going to be miserable no matter where they are. But there is a common theme with people that made their decision, got there, it wasn't what they thought it would be, and then they kind of pretend. And then just one day you don't hear from them again. That's because they left. You don't want to be in that situation because that's a very expensive situation. And if the primary reason to go is because of economics, the last thing you need to do is to, to make a decision that you have to go back on in a year or so and lose all that you've invested in it. Because that's what you're doing. You're investing in a new life. So making the right decision is key. And the only way you can make that right decision is to sit down with pen and paper, be honest with yourself about the reasons. But what you have to do is shed the rose colored glasses. It's cliche day, I know. You have to get past the fantasy. This image that you have in your head, no matter what that image is, I can almost guarantee, should we put a percent? 95% of the time, you're gonna find that image ultimately was fantasy. It was not true. That is absolutely not the way that you wanna make a decision. So forget the fantasy, face up to the truth, face up to reality so that you go in with both eyes wide open, yet another cliche. Okay, that's it for today. This is just an introduction. We're gonna cover those other topics. We're also gonna go into some very specific, practical things about housing, and where you get your information from, type of governments. We're gonna talk about practical things like backup. What do you do about banking? What do you do if you lose your wallet? So we're going to talk about all of those things over the next couple of weeks. I hope to see you in this series. I hope to get lots of comments, suggestions. If you've got questions, put it down below. And last thing, in the comments, if you take a look, scroll down to the bottom. There's information on consulting. And while I do these videos for your information, I don't hold that back but sometimes you need somebody that's been there, man on the ground that's gonna be straight with you. And I've got a program now, if you're interested, to help you with that. And of course, as always, there's GoFundMe, Patreon, if you wanna help support this channel, it's greatly appreciated. I'll catch you next time.